Show. <laughs> Folks, my first guest tonight is not just a Grammy award-winning musician and a fashion icon. She is also, as the world will soon learn, a brilliant actress. Tomorrow, she makes her feature film debut in A Star is Born. Please welcome to The Late Show, Lady Gaga. <laughs> I'm so glad to have you here. I'm so happy to be here. This is incredible. I, 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 I have so many questions to ask you tonight. I might actually refer to my cards, which I try not to, and I'm sure I won't get to all of them. But there's so many things I want to talk to you about, not only your career, but especially this movie that comes out tomorrow, A Star is Born, directed, written, and starring Bradley Cooper and you. Yes. And I've got something on these people. They've never seen it. But I think everyone's going to see this movie because I rarely leave a movie theater as moved <laughs> and as, <laughs> as inspired, not only, not only as, a, as an artist, uh, but also just as a human being, to, to be better and to listen to the people around me and to to pay attention to what people are going through and what they want to express. Thank you so much. You're, you are so wonderful, and I am so grateful and so humbled to be here. Mm. And, you know, there can be 100 people in the room, and 99 don't believe in you, and just one does, and Bradley Cooper believed in me, and I would not be here without him today. He, <laughs> he's incredible. Now, um... How did you, how did that go about? How did you meet him and, and, and how, how did you end up getting this part? Well, it was just kind of this incredible experience. I, I sang uh, uh, the night before I met him at a event for cancer thrown by Sean Parker. Mm -hmm. And I was singing La Vie en Rose. I was doing a jazz set that evening. And Bradley just happened to be in the audience. And I got a phone call that he wanted to meet me the next day. And he came to my house and I was like, Oh my God, what's going on? <laughs> and uh, you know, he, he, he came into the, ha the home and I looked into his eyes and I just felt an instant connection with him. I mean, he made me feel so comfortable and he's just, he's such a kind and loving person. Mm -hmm. And it, it's so rare, I'll tell you something, there's a lot of fake people in Hollywood and Bradley is not one of them. Yeah, the interesting thing <laughs> is, uh, you know, he, he's, he's, uh, he's physically attractive. That, that too, yeah. He's physically attractive, and yeah. he's a great actor, and as I said, he's a fantastic musical performer, and he, he co-wrote this movie, and he also wrote his songs, and he also directed it. I admire and him acted. so much more, and acted, <laughs> and I, I admire him so much more, and I like him so much less, because leave something to the rest of us, is my feeling when I left the movie. Come on, <laughs> damn it, Bradley Cooper, some of us have to be able to do something he better really than you. He really is great at everything, though. I mean, it's just the truth. This is the, 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 it, uh, was this the, the, uh, premiere? Yes. At, uh, the Venice Film Festival? Yes. Okay. <laughs> That's amazing. It was a really fun time. You know, I, it, it was just a culmination of the wonderful experience I had with him, you know, that day that I met him at my house, mm -hmm. he wanted to sing a song with me um, called Midnight Special by Creedence Clearwater Revival. Sure. And uh, right before we sang, uh, I fed him first because he was hungry. <laughs> and we're both Italian and we're from the East Coast, so, you know, that's what you do. And uh, so I was, uh, you know, heating up some leftover pasta in a frying pan, and we were talking, and then I printed out the sheet music, and I went to the piano, and I sat down, and I started to play, and then he opened his mouth and sang, and I was like, oh, my God. I said, Bradley, you have a voice. I mean, that man, he sings from his gut. He sings from his soul. And, you know, you can be a technically perfect singer, and I'm sure, you know, the band can all agree, like, you can be technically perfect but have no ability to tell a story, yeah. you know? And he just can tell a story when he sings. And I was just, I was so drawn to his passion. And, you know, that's why I wanted to do this. It was, it was because I, I believe so much in him, and I 
was so grateful that he believed in me. Well, one of the amazing things in the movie is, I mean, it's no surprise that you're a brilliant performer, but I did not know what a, a deeply vulnerable actress you are. I mean, you are completely stripped down in this movie. You, the scenes are um, very raw, um, um, at times tragic and sad, but it's, it's incredibly energizing to watch someone take those kind of risks that you both are on camera. For instance, you're performing all the songs for real, for live, in front yes. of festival we crowds, sing, we right? We sing live everything. But in almost every time that you're doing a song, you're also doing scenes with each other. Yes. You're doing the song and you're acting a scene with each other, which is, I don't know, it's like juggling chainsaws. It, I can't understand <laughs> that it's an incredible, as someone who's done a little performing, what, that been what kind of, what kind of, <laughs> that's a tightrope walk. What did that, what well, was that challenge like? You know, the truth is that, you know, I love singing with him. And at the end of the day, I know, from being close with Bradley, you know, he says it to me on camera on the film, and he says it to me in real life, you know, all you gotta do is trust me. And the truth is that we just trusted each other, and the idea is, you know, not to act at all, you know, to sing, to communicate, to have a conversation. Uh, and, and when we did these scenes together, you know, we did them over and over, and they were different every time, and it was because we did it live. I hate it when I watch a movie and there's music in it, and I can instantly tell that the actors are lip-syncing. It drives me crazy. <laughs> I'm like, we were just on Mars, and now we're on Venus. Why are we on Venus? <laughs> you know, because, you know, the reverberation changes. It's a different room, you know, but, you know, all his choices and how he shot everything, you know, even from the perspective of the stage and all the research that he did. I mean, he was in the studio all the time working and, um, you know, on music and, and uh, uh, just, you know, building a beautiful family and cast. It was, it, it was a sanctuary for making art. And, and I'm, I'm just so glad I got to do it, man, because I never thought I was going to make it as an actress. I gave up and <laughs> went for well, music. You, you started off as an actress, I understand. Like, you studied the uh, Lee Strasberg method. And, yes. and at what point did you say, this isn't for me? Like, this is never going to happen? Uh, when I sucked at auditioning. Yeah. That's interesting. Auditioning is a different skill than actually acting. One hundred percent. Yeah. I was terrible. Like I, I would. <laughs> Did you think they didn't want you to be good? Because that—that's the thing I tell young actors: is like, remember, they want you to be good. Yeah. They want to be done with you, but you walk in thinking that it's a hostile environment. No, it was more just like pure shock. Like, <laughs> like I would get in front of the camera and just be. I mean, I just, I, I just couldn't do it. I just, I mean, I almost got cast in a regional tour of Rent, but I was too young, uh, so that was like the only thing. And I, I did some like extra work. I did was on The Sopranos. <laughs> What'd you do on Sopranos? I was an extra <laughs> when uh, we, they were they were trashing the school in the middle of the night, and so we were by the swimming pool, and I was laughing. It's like three seconds. So you gave it up. And you became Lady Gaga. Yeah, I mean, I just, I, I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna make it as an actress. So, you know, and I love music. I've been playing piano since I was four, singing my whole life, uh, writing songs since I was 13, thanks to my vocal coach, Don Lawrence. Shout out, I love you so much. Um, he, you know, he said to me one day, he said, do you write songs? And I was like, yeah, you know, I've tried it like a little bit. You know, I've written some just music on the piano, and I write some poetry, but I hadn't put the two together. So he was like, maybe you should do that. And then I started writing music, and I wrote a song called, um, the, <laughs> I was 13. <laughs> I'll find a way to love again. <laughs> what, what the hell did I know about love at 13? <laughs> But I wrote that, so, you know. Well, it seems like, like if you wanted to be an actress and then you sort of gave it up and became a, a, a singing and, and, and a music star, but now you're, you're back in this extraordinary debut performance. It's like you've played a lifelong game of Go Fish and you got the card you wanted. It's, it's, it's pretty interesting the way that it all turned out, but, you know, uh, I will say that this was not a career move. It wasn't like, oh, I'm gonna be a singer-songwriter, I'm gonna be a musician, I'm gonna be a sing, a, a, 
whatever I am. <laughs> uh, and, and then I'm going to act. And then I'm going to make it as an actress. I, I really, really, really wanted to do this film because I believed in it. And I believed in everyone involved. And I, I also, you know, I've got to give it up to, to not just Bradley Cooper, but Eric Roth and Will Fetters, who wrote the script. I mean, they, they wrote a beautiful script. And I, I, I was so moved by it. And I, and I felt so a part of it. You know, they would hang out with me and talk to me about the music industry and just record me talking. And I was like, I, I felt a part of the team. You know, the, 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 the collaboration of this project was, it was so warm and so loving. And I, 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 I'm just grateful that I got to experience it. Because it's about two people. It's about, it's about a, a uh, Arizona music star, uh, 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 Jack who is um, uh, Bradley Cooper's character, and he meets you, and you aspire to be a singer. You aspire to be uh, a star. You do your own singing, but you're afraid to sh show your songs to other people. Well, I would put it differently. I, I bet you would. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, uh, my character, Allie, in mm -hmm. this film, she's very different than I was. I mean, when I was 19 years old and I decided, you know, my friends were calling me Gaga when I was out singing in clubs and I was like, I'm going to be Lady Gaga and that's how, you know, I, I knew I had something to say, I wanted to say it, I wanted to, you know, knock on every door, I was dragging my keyboard around New York City, banging on everyone's door, I was pretending to be my own manager to, to get gigs. What was your manager's name, your oh, fake manager? I don't, I, I, didn't, I don't even remember, but mm -hmm. I was like, hello, this is Lady Gaga's manager and um, she's really hot right now. And, you know, and I was just like, you know, I just like was working it, you know, doing everything I could. And I really believed in myself. But my character in this film, Allie, she's not that way. She, she's, you know, in her 30s and she's given up. She doesn't believe in herself. She's been told that she's not, you know, beautiful enough to make it. That, you know, she writes great songs but that she doesn't look so good. And th that, you know, truthfully, she's just incredibly insecure and she's lacking in self-confidence. And it's meeting Jackson, or Jack, as she calls him in the film, it, it's his love for her and his belief in her that gives her wings to fly. We, and, we have a clip here, and this is the first, uh, first night you guys meet. He's drunk and looking for another bar. He comes into the place where you're singing La Vie en Rose. Right. And then... Um, <laughs> yes, my character, she sings uh, once a week at a drag bar, and she's the only uh, girl that gets to sing uh, live because uh, they loved her so much because she used to work there as a server. And, and uh, you get into a fight. He's iced your hand down with some frozen peas, and you're sitting in the parking lot of yeah. a grocery store, and you're, you're talking about writing songs. Yeah. I started writing this song the other day. I'm off the deep end. Watch as I dive in. I never meet the ground. Holy. Can I tell you a secret? I think that scene is, for me, my wife and I were talking about it, that scene is the core of the movie. That, that, that scene is like the crystal around which the entire relationship grows. What, part of the magic is watching your characters fall in love, um, intertwined with artistic collaboration. Yes. Um, how much of that story of what it means to write songs and what it means to take a risk by sharing yourself is your story? Man, if, if I didn't have an ability to share my songs, I just, I don't know who I would be. You know, it's, it's part of who I am. It's, it's part of what made me happy my whole life. You know, if I wasn't sitting here with you right now, I'd still be in a bar downtown, <laughs> banging on a piano somewhere with my high heel on the keys, <laughs> singing my brains off. But, you know, what, what you didn't see right before you saw that clip is that she sings to him, uh, tell me something, boy. Aren't you tired trying to fill that void? Or do you need more? Ain't it hard? keeping it so hardcore. 
And then she sings the, those lyrics after, uh, uh, you know, I'm off the deep end, watch as I dive in, I'll never meet the ground, crash through the surface where they can't hurt us, we're far from the shallow now. You know, for me as a songwriter in these times, like, I couldn't be more grateful to everyone that I worked with on this project to put that song into the world because I think we live in a pretty shallow time. And, and I think that we long for that depth. We long for that honesty. He and, says in the he says right before your character Ally really launches into superstardom, it's like you've got to dig down deep. Right. And be honest, or the audience will know that you're not being honest to them, or else you'll have no legs. You'll have no career. That's right. Nothing really that you want to continue. Right. Have you ever have you ever been challenged with that where you think like oh no wait I've stopped being honest here I, I I lost my way, or like that song I I did it but that's not really, damn I wish I could redo that again because I didn't approach that as honestly as I should have or, you know I I try not to do that because you know with with my records and and my music you know it's always exactly where I'm at, and that's as honest as I can be, and. If if I you know wish I could have tweaked something in the mix here or there, or, you know maybe sang a little part a little differently, I, I I try not to be hard on myself about those things because the most honest thing I can be is exactly what it was, you know. And if that's what I wanted to say in that moment, that's what I'm saying. That's it. That takes discipline to challenge yourself like that. Well, and also you know. Maybe it's because I'm a New Yorker. But, you know, if, if you tell me to zig, I'm going to zag. And if you tell me to ying, I'm going to yang. So, you know, that, that's always how I've, you know, in my own way, maintained my sense of authenticity within myself, is that if somebody told me to take a right, I was taking a sharp <laughs> left. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's good. It's good. It's late night, right? <laughs> the, uh, the movie is 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 really complex, and and it doesn't make a lot of easy choices in it. There are three minutes into the movie, I thought, oh, there's something really special about this movie, and and two hours later, I thought. Oh, no, you were wrong. There's everything really special about this movie. Huh. I started to get nervous that, like, you guys might blow it somehow. It was like watching somebody pitch a no-hitter. Like, oh, God, don't say anything. <laughs> because it, without being indulgent, it gives all the characters all the time in the world to relate to each other, to leave the camera on people, to express their inner emotions. The performances are incredible. Of course, you and Bradley Cooper, but uh, our guest tomorrow night, Sam Elliott. Oh, my Amazing gosh. performance playing Sam Bradley Elliott. Cooper's older brother. Yes. Um, there's a 10-minute scene in the middle um, uh, with Dave Chappelle. Oh yeah, Dave's incredible. And 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 the one that shouldn't have surprised me, but did, is that uh, it's Andrew Dice Clay. Andrew Dice Clay is my father. dad. Oh, it's perfect. Yeah. It's perfect. It could have was been a caricature. It, could have been a caricature, but it's absolutely true. It could not have been more perfect. I felt like I was talking to my dad in the kitchen. <laughs> I mean, and he's just so wonderful. I mean, the whole cast, Anthony Ramos too, who plays my best friend. You know, like everyone was just so so wonderful and you know and and Bradley you know he's a great editor too I mean he's a masterful editor just so the people know this is his first movie this is his first movie which is one of the things that was that I admire and is infuriating it is just <laughs> to come out of the gate with this movie is really shocking well, the, the, but the generosity of the stories you know lingering with each of these characters I think you know is really special and you know I think I just got to give it up to my man, Bradley, for that. You know, he's just, he's, he's really incredible. <laughs> um, the, the movie's about a lot of things. It's a love story, it's about creativity, but it also ends up being uh, about fame and uh, an artist's relationship to the audience. You yes. have a very intimate... And substance abuse. And substance abuse, and about addiction and what that can do in your attempt to save somebody who has uh, a, um, a substance addiction. Um, 
do you ever feel that you, you need to be authentic with your audience, but do you ever feel like you have to save something of your own self for fear that you'll lose yourself in their expectations of you? Well, I've felt that way for a long time. And then I see my f big face on that <laughs> movie screen with no makeup on and my natural hair color, and I'm like, oh, I just gave it away. <laughs> 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 I mean, I mean, you know, I, I have always liked to shape shift. Right. Well, that's what I wanted to ask you is that you, why, why, what did it feel like to be so stripped down? It's just you, huge close ups, no makeup, as you said, your own natural hair. Um, when so many people have got to know you from um, uh, elaborate costumes right. that could border on masks or even armor. Right. So what's it like to, did it ever feel like armor to you, to, a protection from yeah. the public? Yeah, I, I, I think in my own way, absolutely. I mean, I'm sort of like, I always am like wondering like, who am I, you know? I, sort of an enigma to myself. That's the name of my show in Las Vegas mm -hmm. uh, for the residency I'm do doing. It's called Enigma. Uh, you're doing two shows, right? You're doing Enigma and then you're Enigma doing... and then a jazz and piano uh, night as well. When does that start? Uh, that starts in December. Do you, could, December. I, could I get a ticket? Yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, the, the thing is, is that, you know, me without makeup and me with my natural hair, uh, that's not actually me. Like, this is me. What you know, you so that's Allie. Oh. But it's your hair and your face. Yeah, but it's not like the way that I want to dress necessarily, yeah. or the way that I want to walk, or the way that I want to be. So I had to really get inside of that. And I changed my hair and I took off my makeup months before filming the movie because I had to get into character and I had to get used to it. And it was, it was actually kind of liberating because nobody knew who I was. <laughs> Uh, Barbara Streisand, who did the 1976 uh, A Star Is Born, which this isn't really a remake. It's it's a it's a it's a different story, yes. but uh, certainly she and Chris Christopherson are famous for that. She she gave you her blessing, and he, here's a photo of the two of you together, <laughs> right there. That was at her house. That's at her house. That was at her house. Yeah, she invited me over for dinner, and we nice house, I'm guessing. Beautiful house, and and we took that picture together. It was really fun, and she came on set too, which was amazing. And they had already started. Um, Jay had already started editing the film uh, with Bradley, and uh, she watched a little bit of it, and it, she was really awesome. She gave like a speech, and I was crying, and it was, mm. I was a mess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you cry really well in this film. You cry beautifully in this film. Oh, well, those are real tears. I believe it. I they believe it. They were real it. tears. What do, you do to, what do you do to wind down at the end of the day? Because it's pretty, it's pretty intense. I, the movie, we've talked about some tragic things in this movie, but I want people to know that it's, it's I left happy. I left happy because of the beauty of, of the movie. It's sad, but all the, you know, I think J.R.R. Tolkien said, only sad stories are happy. And, 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 and this is a really, happy story to me because it's so inspiring. Thank you. Um, what, how, do, how do I wind down? Is that how do you wind down at the end of the day? I have a glass of wine and cry. <laughs> like everybody else, I think. You've been reading else, my journal. <laughs> would, you, would you like a glass of wine? Sure. <laughs> Um, you're, you're, as you said, you're a native New Yorker. Where, where'd you go to school? I went to Sacred Heart. Oh, my mom was a Sacred Heart girl. Cheers. There you go. I was supposed to go. Oh! Oh. <laughs> Wait, was it? Uh, was it? Uh, was, did you have to learn French? Because Sacred Heart girls have to learn French usually. I took French. Yes. Mm -hmm. Did Japan, you have the français? Mon français très mal. Mon Mais français je... est très. <laughs> yeah, it means. <laughs> <laughs> Moi aussi. <laughs> Moi aussi. <laughs> très, très. Non, ton français est très bien. Ah, merci, merci. Um, did you get, did you get uh, like things like uh, uh, bien, très bien, assez bien, and no notes? Those, those little scores at the end of the week. Um, 
No, they were numbers. They were numbers? Okay. <laughs> well, my mom was a little girl, and she's a little older than you. Um, uh, it was all, all, the, all the demerits at the end I'm of the week 100, were in French. I'm 100, so she must be old. Um, y you've been an outspoken activist um, uh, for women and for the LGBTQ community. What, what do you... <laughs> Are you okay talking about politics at all? Are you okay? Because some guests don't want to yeah, talk sure. about that. What, Bring it what, on. what do you? How do you deal with the other than the wine? How do you deal with the current political environment in the moment we're in? Because a lot of people are very upset on both sides, very angry. You know, when it comes to the political stuff with you, I'm going to say bring it on. Because what I have seen on the news with this debate of Kavanaugh versus Dr. Ford, it's one of the most upsetting things I have ever witnessed. Yeah. That's and it's heartbreaking, but I will, I will tell you something because I am a sexual assault survivor. And the truth is that, you know, like Trump the other day was speaking in a rally and he said, she has no memory of how she got to the party. You know, should we trust that she remembers the assault? And the answer is yes. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you exactly why. And I also know that this woman is smart because she's a psychologist. She's no dummy. If someone is assaulted or experiences trauma, there's science and scientific proof. It's biology that people change. The brain changes and literally what it does is it takes the trauma and it puts it in a box and it files it away and shuts it so that we can survive the pain. And it also does a lot of other things. It can cause body pain. It can cause, you know, baseline elevations in anxiety. It can cause complete avoidance of wanting to even remember or think about what happened to you. But what I believe that I have seen is that when this woman saw that Judge Kavanaugh was going to be possibly put in the highest position of power in the judicial system of this country, she was triggered. And that box opened. And when that box opened, she was brave enough to share it with the world to protect this country. Thank you for being here. <laughs> it was so nice to meet you. I've, I've admired your talent for so many years. Thank but you for having me. I'm so... Uh, I, I, I wish they have seen what I've seen, <laughs> but it's, it's a beautiful performance. Congratulations on your feature film debut, a Truly a Star is Born. Thank you so much for being Thank here. Thank you. A Star is Born is in theaters tomorrow. Lady Gaga, everybody. We'll be right back.